Go ahead. All right. Calling to order the Monday, April 19th, 2021 regular meeting of the 38th Council of the City of Berkeley. Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Council Member Baker. Here from the City That Cares, Berkeley, Michigan. Council Member Blanchard. Here, Berkeley, Michigan. Mayor Pro Tem Dean. Here, Berkeley, Michigan. Council Member Gavin. Here, Berkeley. Council Member Hennan. Here, Berkeley. Council Member Price. Here in Berkeley. Mayor Turbeck. Here in Berkeley as well. Our first order of business this evening is the approval of tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. support. Motion made by Council Member Hennan with support from Council Member Blanchard. Are there any changes or additions to tonight's agenda? All right. <clears throat> Seeing none, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Yes. Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. At this time, please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the pledge. With us this evening is Pastor Zach Dunlap. Let's pray. Good and loving God, you are always with us. We thank you for the gift of joy in days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends, and for the opportunity to live, play, work, and worship in this wonderful city of Berkeley. Guide our city council members this evening as they make decisions to move our city forward. God, we are not yet fully who or where you designed us to be. As a nation, as a city, as individuals, we're not there yet, but we're working on it. Empower us to join together in shining light, sharing love, and creating a better future for all who will inhabit it. We come from many different faith traditions in this city, but it is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, there we are. Perfect. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we are at our first public comment section of the evening. This is for items, remember, that are included on tonight's agenda. There will be a separate public comment towards the end of the meeting for items that were not covered on tonight's agenda. Remember that council members will not engage you in discussion, but if your concern needs to be addressed by a member of city staff or department of the city, please email the clerk's office at clerk at berkeleymich.net or call the clerk's office at 248-658-3310. If you would like to comment, please raise your hand or dial in at 1-312-626 Six seven nine nine. Again, that phone number is one three one two six two six six seven nine nine. You'll be prompted to put in the meeting ID, which is nine four nine two nine eight four six six four five. Should be on the banner as well on the screen. Again, that number, that ID number is nine four nine two nine eight four six six four five. You will be recognized by either name or your phone number. When you speak, please state your name and city of residence. And remember, you will be limited to three minutes. Not up here, Mr. Liska, that we have anybody 
and is currently in the meeting that is raising their hand. Okay. No, no, one. no one in the waiting area. All right, we'll give them uh, another second in case they're frantically dialing in that number and ID. Uh, while we're waiting, Ms. Mitchell, did you have any communications that were sent to you to be read into the minutes? I did not. Okay. We will give it a couple more seconds, and then if we uh, still don't have any public comments at this time, we will move on. And since I'm not seeing anybody trying to come in or anybody in the waiting room, all right, thank you. We will move on to tonight's order of business. First up is our consent agenda. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read the items on tonight's consent agenda? One, approval of the minutes. Matter of approving the minutes of the 38th regular city council meeting on Monday, April 5th, 2021. Two, warrant. Matter of approving warrant number 13 R1021. Matter of approving the 2021 summer maintenance agreement between the Road Commission for Oakland County and the City of Berkeley. The city will be reimbursed a total of $1,680, which will be paid in two installments, $1,092 due in September 2021 and $588 due upon completion of the last maintenance activity. Four, Proclamation P1021, matter of proclaiming May 2021 as Berkeley History Month. Five, Proclamation P1121, matter of proclaiming May 2021 as Motorcycle Awareness Month. Six, Proclamation P1221, matter of proclaiming May 2021 as Mental Health Awareness Month. Seven, Proclamation P1321, matter of proclaiming May 2021 as Building Safety Month. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? So moved. Support. Okay. Motion made by Council Member Baker with support from Council Member Blanchard. Are there any changes or corrections? Seeing none, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on tonight's consent agenda? Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Our consent agenda has passed. We now move on to tonight's regular agenda. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number one? Motion number M2321, matter of approving the purchase of one TPE 5600 EDTS adjustable height cabinet, 10 print, and palm live scan device from Idemia 5515 East La Palma Avenue, Suite 100, Anaheim, California, 92807, at a cost of $16,712 from the equipment account number 101-310-982-000. Is there a motion to approve M2321? Motion to approve. Support. Motion to approve by Councilmember Blanchard. I believe that was Councilmember Price uh, that supported it. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, ladies Mayor, uh, good evening, everyone. This is a budget item coming for you this evening. It's uh, part of our planned replacement schedule for our equipment over in public safety. As the motion indicates, uh, what this essentially does is takes fingerprint and palm print scans and interfaces them with the uh, APHIS system, which uh, as mentioned in your uh, memo letter to uh, from Chief Kane is, is basically the national standard for uh, tracking these items, uh, fingerprints and palm scans. Uh, Chief Kane and, and his uh, and the command staff have done a fantastic job of locating a vendor here. And uh, they know this equipment well and are ready to um, put it into use as soon as possible. Chief Kane joins you this evening to answer any of the technical questions. Chief, before we uh, get into all the technical questions, anything else you'd like to add on our uh, potentially new scanner here? Well, I'm hoping there's not gonna be too many technical questions, but uh, uh, Mr. Baumgarten did a nice job of explaining this is basically the cost of doing business. And uh, we budgeted uh, $21,000 for this device. And uh, 
it actually came in at over four thousand dollars less and our yearly maintenance cost will be less too so uh if you have to replace a piece of equipment uh it's it's kind of a win-win uh and i'd be happy to answer any questions questions for the chief council member blanchard just a quick one, Chief. This is the same model we have had now. Will it be much training to get the guys up to speed on this? No, it shouldn't be. Uh, I, I know every time we switch, there's a little bit of software differences, but uh, it, it's pr pretty much going to be the same. There will be some training, but that is also included in the, uh, the price of the purchase. Thank you. Council Member Gavin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Chief, thanks a lot for bringing this uh, before us. Just a quick question. Does the county have any plans to help with any additional cost sharing uh, outside of just the collective negotiated price? Um, no, it, it's basically up to each department that uh, that has a device to replace it. I know some departments uh, actually quite, there's only a couple in, in Oakland County that I know of have more than one. So uh, I guess if there's any, you know, some departments have in their records too for uh, uh for uh, applicants for CCWs and uh, uh, gun permits. So uh, I guess the good news is we only have to replace one as opposed to more than one. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Council Member Price. Yes, thank you, Chief. Are there any uh, new features or services that this device offers that our previous one didn't? Um, I don't believe, and uh, Stan can uh, feel free to pipe up also because uh, he's, he's going to know the uh, some of the technical, technical aspects a little better than I. I don't believe so. It's just updated software, updated processor, updated scanner. Everything is is pretty much uh, the newest technology. Yeah, most of it is going to be for um, the Windows 10 upgrade. Uh, Oakland County and Clemens uh, over the past year has been... Uh, replacing all of their hardware. They've already done our CAD terminals. Um, we have to replace, I think, just mugshot that's left, but everything else within the, um, uh, within the building, though, is up to speed as far as CGIS compliance, FBI compliance, all that kind of stuff. This is uh, one of the final pieces. So, Fantastic. And I know we always have Stan, but will the company also provide some um, service uh, support for if we run into any technical issues yes and uh th this company uh actually was formerly identex which i've been dealing with for uh well over 15 years and it's actually the same uh the same person involved also from uh idemia or whatever their name is now so uh I've, I've got a really good relationship with them and they've been great to work with um and clemis also is very supportive also uh a lot of the things they they actually take care of before it even gets to that level Great to hear, thank you. Sure. Mayor Pro Tem Dean. Yes, thank you. Um, Chief, the new model looks like it's self-contained in its own cabinet and it looks like it's on wheels. Um, and the old one looks like it's sat on a table or on a desk. So um, is that accurate that that comes, it's a freestanding um, and you could move it around if you needed to? Yes, it is. Obviously it has to be hooked up to the, uh, to the network but yes sure. you could we can move that for cleaning where the old one you really can't so our plan is to take everything out of that space and put it in there um and quite honestly that's my former department we had a freestanding unit mm -hmm. that way everything's locked up the the pc's locked up it's right. it's uh less chance of being da damaged if there's an incident in the booking room yeah sounds good thank you muted sorry about that chief hey do we expect the the life uh, lifespan of this to be about the same as it was on the previous machine or does the new technology maybe allow this potentially to, to last a little longer typically it's about five years but um in in our current life scan was here before i got here but i i think typically they're they're they last i'm going to guess anywhere from uh up to seven eight years uh Okay. This is mandatory. We have to switch it over. Ours is working relatively well right now. We do need service once in a while. Uh, so I'm hoping this will last well over five years. Okay, excellent. Uh, anybody else? It does not appear uh, that anybody else has any questions uh, for you, Chief. 
Well, thank you uh, for, for answering the question and giving us a little more update on uh, the, the new live scan device that we'll be, uh, or the live scan device we'll be using. And Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on M2321? Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Yes. Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Trebrek? Yes. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number two on tonight's agenda? Motion number M2421, matter of authorizing Hubble, Roth, and Clark HRC for professional engineering services to conduct the phase two sign recommendations at a cost not to exceed $63,100, $18,000 from the street signs, contractual services major account number 202-475-818-000 and $45,100 from the street signs contractual services local account number 203-475-818-000. Is there a motion to approve M2421? No motion to approve. Motion to approve by Council Member Gavin with support from Mayor Pro Tem Dean. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, not surprisingly, this falls on the heels of phase one, which was uh, to log all the traffic control devices. Uh, that includes uh, traffic signage, traffic control signs, as well as parking signs within the city. Uh, as outlined by the memo from Chief Kane to you, uh, the next phase is to go through some analysis. Uh, as also outlined by uh, Chief Kane's memo, this is, comes on the heels of a long-standing discussion that we've been having internally about the appropriateness of some of the signs that we have, the uh, traffic control orders that uh, have a, a several decade legacy on them now. Uh, as Chief notes, uh, it's as we discussed in previous meetings, actually, uh, we've talked about potentially basically starting from scratch and, and making sure that there is a consistent logic that runs throughout all of our traffic uh, control and uh, decisions that we make. Uh, this would be a huge help to uh, Chief Kane as well as his staff and Public Works and, and our planning department as well. Um, so this is the second uh, portion of this now. We, we did divide this up into a couple of different phases that council can approve along the way. Uh, we joined this evening by not only Chief Kane but also Roland Alex of HRC. HRC has been assisting us in this process so far. So we're um, uh, recommending that we move on from phase one to phase two here this evening. Thank you, um, Chief or, or Roland, uh, I guess either one of you, could you just give, give the residents that are watching this a little bit more of what is phase two, some of the, the, the specific things that we're looking for for phase two and, and trying to figure out? Sure, <clears throat> I could uh, list some of the high level stuff. Um, as part of the phase one, we had, um, we did do an inventory of all your signs. You have uh, a little under 3000 signs throughout the city. Um, Part of phase two will be identifying and replacing those signs that either don't meet re reflectivity or um, the signs themselves may be outdated. So phase two would address replacing signs that are in poor condition. Um, we'll also review, as uh, Mr. Baumgartner mentioned, <clears throat> the existing traffic control orders. Um, in essence, those are kind of the legal basis that allows the city to restrict parking in certain areas or reduce speed limits throughout the city. So we will review those and um, look to make sure that they are still relevant and that they're consistent uh, with the current uses of the city streets. Um, we'll also um, work on identifying locations uh, that will um, increase fire safety. So looking for no parking spaces around fire hydrants, uh, looking at um, making sure there's proper fire lanes uh, around schools, around buildings and alleyways. Um, another um, important item that we'll address with this phase two is uh, parking around the schools. Um, there's quite a bit of, uh, over the years, there's been lots of uh, varying opinions about drop off locations and no parking and which streets should be allowed for parking and how far down streets um, students can park. So we'll work, uh, we'll meet with the schools to understand the traffic pool patterns. Um, We'll visually assess some of the elementary schools to see drop off and pick up locations, traffic flows, um, and we'll ultimately 
develop a strategy that will both benefit the schools and the residents. So those are some of the high level um, parts of this phase two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, perfect. That's that's exactly what I was looking for. You know, we we have all of these reports and, and counts and we can see things, but if the residents are just watching, they may not have as much of an idea as what we're talking about. So I do appreciate that, uh, Mr. Alex. Questions from council for either the chief or uh, Mr. Alex on phase two. Council member Hennon. Yes, first, I just want to say I'm very excited for this project so that we have some logical consistency that we can apply to uh, what we're doing in the city. Um, the question I had is once we get these recommendations back, what is the next step going to be after that? I think uh, the first thing we'll want to do is this is not even though we get, uh, public safety is bringing that this project to you, it's really just as much DPW and it's just as much community mm -hmm. development. So we'll talk, we'll all get together. Um, we'd also like some input, uh, especially when it comes to some of the two hour parking on 12 mile and Coolidge from uh, DDA and or Chamber of Commerce, uh, because I've heard it, I've, I've heard nothing but pro two hour parking on, on Coolidge and 12 mile. There may be somebody that doesn't want it, but uh, bottom line is we have to be consistent. So we're looking to be consistent and fair um, and have a reason for what we do instead of just, you know, for lack of a better term, just throwing a sign up. All right, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Dean. Thank you. I don't know who, well, probably um, Mr. Alex, this might be better directed at you. Um, you mentioned in the packet that um, you're going to investigate the pros and cons of the two hour parking, which Chief just addressed. How do you go about addressing or look investigating that or looking into it? What what are the measures that you use? Um, well, I think um, a lot of it will be discussions with city staff, um, kind of what and with DDA. Um, what do you want your downtown to feel like? Um, what type of parking opportunities do you want your residents and your visitors to have? Um, and, and as Chief mentioned, uh, pretty uh, in general, people are very pro to our parking, um, but we would also um, try to engage with um, business owners. So it's a, it's, a, it's a discussion and it's a fact finding mission and um, we will be doing that with the DDA and, and with city staff. Great, thank you. Here's that's more of a qualitative as far as the, not as much a quantitative on that aspect. Great. Uh, additional questions. Council Member Blanchard. Thank you, Ron. I just want to clarify. I think this study is only determining what sign needs to be replaced. There's nothing in this uh, to fund the sign replacement. Is that correct? There is. Um, we, we did budget, I and I don't have the number right in front of me, I believe closer to $80,000. So there is still funds in uh, this project to do at least some of the signs. Uh, and, and that's Maybe if, uh, I'm not sure if Roland can answer that, or or Matt, or if that's a, a DPW question. But there there are funds left over in this project to be able to replace some of the signs. It, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's correct. The the number here in the motion this evening though does not include that. This is the analysis portion. Okay. Now the uh, at some point in time, either it's like one or two of this phase, uh, we're going to do uh, locate all these with GIS. Is that, is that under phase two or has that already been done? That's already been done. Yep. The uh, okay. a little under 3,000 signs have been categorized mm -hmm. and are in your GIS system and um, DPW has access to that. Great. Thank you. And, and I was going to include that in the packet. No, it was uh, just way too big. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Baker. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much for bringing this before us again today and um, and for the, the the great work thus far in, in the earlier phases. And as we um, move forward, I think I have more of a comment and then a question. Um, the comment being more along the lines of uh, just continuing to remind ourselves and others of our complete streets policy to ensure that any of the recommendations that we come, up, um, come forth with um, out of this analysis uh, comply with the policies that we have in place to ensure that all of our streets are safe uh, for all users, regardless of, um, of means or method of uh, getting across or down any of the streets that we have. So, so please continue to keep in mind our complete streets policy, uh, which has been in effect since 2010, 
uh, and it's something that certainly is, is very important to us as one of the most walkable communities uh, in Oakland County. And then uh, from a question perspective, um, if there is a change that is um, deemed appropriate um, in the signage and therefore in the behavior that we seek uh, for our residents and visitors um, to, to begin to understand, does this phase also encompass the notion of um, designing that communication outreach that'll be necessary, you know, notifications to, uh, to folks to say, hey, you know, good news, this thing that used to be this way, now it's gonna be that way. Uh, you know, because um, it's one thing to just put a new sign in the ground, uh, but it's another thing to, uh, to ensure that the sign is understood and appreciated as to why, you know, a particular um, implement was added or removed. Uh, for a given stretch of the road or an intersection. So, so first, you know, a comment around complete streets, and then secondly, a question around when do we think about communication as it pertains to any changes that this analysis might uh, recommend us uh, moving forward with. And and again, my gratitude to um, to y'all for for making this happen. Uh, Councilman Baker, the most of the communication strategy around this will be plotted by city staff. Uh, will certainly depend on H HRC for some of the technical details, um, but that'll be an in-house portion of that. Um, Tori Mathis will take will run point on communicating that out to the uh, to the community at large and, and really trying to approach this as as comprehensively as possible, not necessarily get bogged down into single signs, uh, but talk in total about the benefit of having a comprehensive strategy on hand, how we follow it, and how it will help the overall uh, safety and ease and uh, of course the complete streets plan as well. Great, thank you. Yeah, I think perhaps um, as part of that, maybe a before and after kind of thing might be helpful, right? Cause it's, uh, it's all great to talk, you know, philosophy and principle, but at the end of the day, people wanna understand what does this mean to me? And if I can look at an intersection or a portion of the city and see, oh, okay, this is the same, or, you know, hey, this is gonna be different now. Uh, I I'd, um, I'd just recommend that, uh, that we take that into consideration as part of that broader communication plan. Again, it's great to provide the context and the, de and the, the big picture and the intent. We need that. Uh, but at the end of the day, folks need to know, what do you want me to do? Uh, and so um, I'm asking you to kind of thread the needle here uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that folks understand if something's going to change, it's great. They just need to know about it, right? and why this is a good thing for our community. So, so thank you in advance for the work that you do because I know that kind of stuff is not easy uh, and, um, and I appreciate your efforts uh, to that end. So thank you. Yes, sir. Roland, what is the, uh, the timeline? I know it's, it's listed again in your memo for us, but uh, for the residents at home. Yeah, um, it, it, it's a six to seven month type of endeavor. Um, obviously with the, the school, um, with a, a portion of this being revolving around schools, we have to wait till schools back in session. Um, we might be able to mobilize some some folks um, towards the end of the school this year, but uh, most likely the school portion will be in the fall of 2021. So it's a six to seven month type of um, endeavor. And this is obviously, as we mentioned, primarily the analysis section. We've done, done a phase one catalog, and now we're at phase two. Let's look at everything, and then I assume phase three, at least to answer council member Hennon's uh, earlier question, what happens next, I would say phase three, uh, follows phase two logically. And, and that's where we'll get into not only the communication, but what are we going to do in the signage um, and proposed changes or changes that we will make based on these recommendations. Is that fair? Yes? Okay. Yep. Any other questions for the chief or Mr. Alex? All right. Well, I appreciate uh, being here. And this is obviously a conversation that we have spoken about and are very excited to be moving into phase two on. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, with that, would you please call the roll on M2421? Hennon? Yes. Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Terpak. Yes. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number three on tonight's agenda? Ordinance number 0421, 
manner of considering the first reading of an ordinance of the city council of the city of Berkeley, Michigan to amend section 42-77 of chapter 42, downtown development to correct the expiration date of the tax increment financing plan. Is there a motion to approve 00421? Oh, there is your honor. <laughs> support. support. Motion to approve by council member Baker with support from council member Gavin. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first and foremost, this is uh, this change here that is as preserved here is merely one single date. It's a matter of information and not a matter of policy. Uh, the policy was actually set by the council way back in 2016, uh, May or yeah, May uh, 2016 to be exact, when the council uh, passed a resolution updating the TIF plan and uh, putting it in place for an additional 25 years. Uh, but this was noticed later that uh, the original ordinance did have a finite sunset date on it. Um, and that is, uh, again, that is not the policy. The, uh, the uh, uh, action taken by council in 2016 absolutely supersedes the date listed in the ordinance, uh, but it is a, a best practice and, and the best thing possible to make sure that those two dates do align. Uh, so as I said earlier in the, um, this is merely for informational purpose for anybody who is reading through the ordinance. Um, it happens to come upon this particular section, make sure that they see the proper information instead of one that carries an outdated deadline for you. Um, some of the additional details are provided in a memo uh, provided to you in your packet by uh, Mr. Hill, but that certainly is the summation of it. Mr. Steren, is there anything else um, that you'd like to include as we uh, uh, in this discussion? Sure, the city manager covered it pretty well. I view this as a uh, cleanup type of uh, ordinance to clean up an inconsistency in our code. As a manager of Omgarden indicated, the development and uh, TIF plan uh, was properly amended by ordinance, you know, following mm -hmm. all the, the proper procedures back in 2016. Everything was done correctly, but it appears that what was overlooked is a provision in our um, municipal code uh, that's still related to the original plan and should have been correspondingly probably updated back in 2016 and as a, and it wasn't. So call us clean up, catch up, whatever. It's not a substantive change, but rather uh, just to avoid confusion, uh, we want what's stated in our actual published code to match up with the expiration date of the plan, which is the expiration date is in the year 2040, not the year 2021. So <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the timing is appropriate now to, uh, to make this change, but it's a non-substantive change. Thank you for that. Uh, questions from, from council members on uh, what we have again is, is more of making sure that everything is in alignment. Council did take action in 2016, but for whatever reason, this change was not made. So we need to make sure that we are making it today to have everything uh, correctly lined up. Okay, it appears that Mr. Baumgarten and Mr. Stern have, have done a tremendous job of explaining <laughs> what we are doing today. Seeing no additional uh, questions, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on 00421? Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number four on tonight's agenda? Resolution number R1121, matter of authorizing publication of a notice of public hearing to be held May 17th, 2021, regarding the proposed operating budget for the city of Berkeley, Michigan for fiscal year 2021-2022. Is there a motion to approve R1121? Motion to approve. Support. Motion made by council member Blanchard with support from council member Price. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a routine item, comes before you each year, uh, typically the second meeting in April. 
Uh, we are a little uh, under a month out from asking the council to consider the approval of the budgets uh, for the upcoming fiscal year that will start July 1st. Uh, a portion of, of that process is to include a public hearing. Uh, we'll have some published materials out over the course of the next four weeks, uh, as well as a budget work session. Uh, plenty of opportunities for the residents to know down to the, uh, to, to almost to the penny and definitely to the dollar uh, of how their money will be spent and invested in their community. Um, this kicks off that process now. This is published uh, in all the appropriate places as outlined in the um, uh, uh, note, notice here. Uh, and it gives a little bit of information on the budget. Uh, and then again, we'll, we'll supplement those details with some published items for you as well. So this is not only the capital improvements plan, but also the millage rates of each of the uh, levies that the city specifically um, uh, will, will have on the tax bill coming up. And thank you. And, and just again, for the folks that are, are not looking at this, but understanding uh, the, the impact of COVID, it does say uh, on this resolution as well, the copies of the proposed operating budget will be available for the public or for public inspection on our website um, and via email request through the office of the clerk as well at clerk at berkeleymich.net. Again, different this year, you're not just walking in uh, to, to peruse one of those. So we wanna make sure there are uh, still, there's still easy access uh, for residents to look at the proposed budget. Uh, as we prepare for our budget sessions. Any additional comments or questions? Again, this is obviously something that we, we certainly do every year and revolves around the absolute most important aspect uh, of our roles as council members. Council member Hennan. Yes, thank you, your honor. You almost took everything I was going to say. I was just going to add that the right. budget was, it will be ready for the public on May 5th. So, thank you. Oh, yeah, I did. I, I stopped just short of, of that line. I apologize. Thank you for clarifying that. Councilmember Blanchard. Uh, just a question, a question for the city manager. That, that date change was made on the, on the official document? Yes, sir. Uh, my apologies for not noting that. Uh, the, the, item, the packet includes the reference to the 2019 capital improvement projects uh, that will be updated on the official notice to say the 2021 capital improvements project. I apologize for the oversight on that. Thank you. Any oh, council member Hannon? Yeah, um, just one additional clarification on dates. We were discussing pushing it to Tuesday the 18th, but we are going to keep it starting Monday the 17th of May. Uh, that's um, for clear, clarification purposes. The budget work sessions will be the 11th and 12th. Uh, oh, yes, the week before that. This is the Monday meeting. The council meeting will be May 17th, where we'll hold this public hearing. Okay, yeah. thank you for correcting me. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments? Okay, we are quickly moving into the budget season. Ms. Mitchell, would you please uh, call the roll on R1121? Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Yes. Price? Yes. Turbrat? Yes. We now move on to item number five, please, Ms. Mitchell. Motion number M2521, matter of authorizing the city manager to sign the application for additional service credit purchase for Janice Lady, approving two years of additional service credit. This service credit purchase is allowed by the City of Berkeley Merit System of Human Resource Management, Section 1001.08, and meets all the requirements of the MERS plan document. Is there a motion to approve M2521? So moved. Board. Motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Dean with support from Council Member Blanchard. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the motion states, this is a, an allowable purchase by the merit system. Uh, that system is approved by Council for periodic updates. So Council essentially um, has uh, two, a dual approval process here. Uh, one is the initial approval of the policy and one is the individual request uh, like the one that comes before you this evening. 
uh, as noted in the memo provided by the finance director, uh, the city does have to pay a portion of this, uh, $18,014. Uh, but also noted in the same memo, uh, it's slightly less than what we would pay should uh, Janice you know, work here for, two, for those two years. Uh, so this is a mutually beneficial policy that uh, we have employees take advantage of every once in a while. Uh, they like it. Certainly the city uh, uh, likes it as well. And MERS is also supportive of these um, as well. So uh, we'd like to ask council to, to consider approving it this evening and um, we'll continue to hope that Janice doesn't go anywhere because she is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, that, that, that's always my question when we have these things. I feel like uh, I, I understand the mutual benefits, but it's also the potential uh, risk of, of losing uh, one of our valuable members uh, sooner than certainly I would like to. Uh, Mr. Pollock, is there anything else you'd like to add? I know that we we went through most of, of the memo, but uh, just a, a clarification. Uh, you are seeing more of these um, just because, again, the popularity of, of being able to have that option to leave a couple years earlier if the individual so choose. Some will, some will not. I think you got me on record of saying I'm not going to leave two years earlier. <laughs> When I did this, but yeah. uh, it's certainly we wouldn't allow that anyway. So don't <laughs> worry, it's not about it. yeah. it, It's certainly something that, as uh, City Manager Baumgarten mentioned, it, it's beneficial to the city and the individual. Uh, it's good policy, and again, I, I I just think you see more people taking advantage of it now. Uh, Council Member Hennon did suggest, which I think is a great suggestion, that in budgets moving forward, we at least put a couple of these in the budget uh, just in case uh, each year. I know we had. Uh, Probably, I think we had three this year. So uh, there'll be years where we have more, but it's probably good to plan for at least a couple um, from the expense side. So I think that's a great suggestion and we will continue to do that uh, with council approval. Excellent. Any additional questions for our finance director, who again has just publicly stated he has no intentions of leaving early. That's the second meeting we have that. <laughs> Nobody likes a liar, Mark. <laughs> Okay. All right. Seeing no uh, additional questions, thank you uh, for explaining that. Um, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on M2521? Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number six on tonight's agenda? Motion number M2621, matter of authorizing the amendment of the 2020-2021 budget as presented. Is there a motion to approve M2621? So moved. Support. Motion made by council member Gavin with support from council member Baker. Mr. Baumgarten, before we uh, hand it back over to Mr. Pollock. That, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. Not much of an intro here, just to note that the, uh, the amendments are, are uh, clearly outlined in your packet, as well as a, uh, a narrative memo uh, explaining them and the uh, net effect. And Mr. Pollock has done a fine, fantastic job of uh, managing the city's funds. And uh, again, I'm very happy to hear he's not leaving anytime soon. <laughs> Mr. Pollock, you want to give us a quick overview of what we're looking at tonight? Um, yeah, we do. We we don't have anything that I would consider massive. Actually, it's on the positive side. Uh, Council Member Blanchard had checked in earlier to make sure that I had addressed the um, there was an issue with increase in the state shared revenue, uh, which is because we conservatively budgeted at uh, the suggestion of the state uh, a year ago. Um, we're adding back close to that 20% that we had taken away uh, due to COVID. We knew with the shutdowns, it would impact income tax and sales tax revenues, which the state does share with us uh, in combination with that, uh, you know, now being a little bit better than expected in some of the CARES Act money through the federal government, um, we're, we're kind of reinstating uh, that revenue that we had anticipated not getting uh, because it, uh, the estimate now is we will get it. So. Uh, those revenues actually helped increase our bottom line, uh, well, increase our decrease bottom line of our general fund. Uh, we still anticipate around a 1.8 deficit, but 
you know, as numbers come in, uh, you know, our, our directors all do a great job keeping a tight eye on the budget and and uh, we've done well in the years I've been here uh, coming in under budget, which is a good thing. Um, but uh, we're still able to do a lot of these capital projects. So uh, it'll be a challenge again, as it is each year. Uh, COVID's made it even more of a challenge. But, um, you know, some of the, the, the one thing that I think caught me off guard, which won't happen again next year, is the health care. Uh, we've got our self-insured plan, which a little bit higher than expected. And I made the mistake of using actual numbers. We had two great years. And this year, our active employees, I think during COVID, are probably doing many more elective procedures and other things uh, that they weren't briefly. So uh, that bump up, uh, I think we took care of on our last round. But you will see one more round of budget amendments in June, uh, which will be for our end of our year. Uh, Teresa Carlton and I discussed the the, the most difficult, I think, right now is Parks and Rec, because again, we've, we've had very little revenue because programs are not happening. Um, I give her and I give uh, Matt Church much credit for what they've done, uh, which is generally relying on the public when you're generating revenue for programs. And we, when you haven't had that, they've done a great job, you know, keeping the wheels turning here. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see it at fiscal year and uh, how much that impact is. But um, um, it's a challenge, you know, as Matt and I know, Matt and I will go over our preliminary budget tomorrow. Uh, uh, I will be for the first time in a while back into the office and uh, he and I will go through some of the numbers, but for next year, but uh, uh, this year, again, we're in, we're in pretty good shape from where we started. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to make these recommendations uh, for budget amendments. Thank you, Mr. Pollock. Are there uh, questions from, from council members? Councilmember Blanchard. Uh, not a question, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, just a comment so the residents know that uh, what we're talking about here is $318,000 of additional money from the state that we had not planned on getting in our budget. So that's why things are looking better because uh, we're getting this extra money. So I want to make sure the residents understood that. That's, that will help increase our, uh, our fund balance, uh, decreases the deficit to our fund balance and increases our fund balance. Thank you for that uh, clarification, Councilmember Blanchard. Yes, thank you, Councilmember Blanchard. That's I didn't get to the the nitty gritty, the numbers. I appreciate him uh, mentioning the dollars there. Other questions or comments, uh, Mr. Baumgarten. Yeah, and Mr. Mayor, as, as we discussed the uh, the use of fund balance, just for for some perspective, these were uh, planned uses of fund balance this year. This was by design. Uh, mm -hmm. as we uh, funded the uh, fantastic improvements to Merchant Park, as well as took delivery of the uh, beautiful uh, Tower 4 in our public safety department. So uh, this isn't a, usually when you hear about somebody dipping into their savings, it's not the best situation, uh, but this was a planned use of fund balance this year. That's gonna work out actually better than we anticipated. Mm -hmm. And fits into our new fund balance policy. Uh, that we discussed at our last meeting as well. Right. All right. Well, seeing no other questions or comments as it relates to this round of amendments, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on M2621? Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Turbeck. Yes. We now move into our second public comments uh, section of the evening. Again, this is for items that were not covered on tonight's agenda. Uh, the same rules apply as before. Member council members will not engage you in discussion, but if your concern needs to be addressed by a member of city staff or department of the city, please email the clerk's office at clerk at berkeleymich.net or call the clerk's office at 248-658-3310. If you would like to comment um, and you are not yet a part of the, the meeting here, please call 1312-626-6799. Again, that's 1312-626-6799 with the meeting ID 949-2984-6645. Again, that ID is 
2984-6645. You'll be recognized by either name or number. And when you speak, uh, please state your name, city of residence, and remember you will be limited to three minutes. Looks, Dan, I have a feeling that I made sure that I read all of that, but I'm not sure we're gonna have any takers, at least not yet. You did a great job though. I appreciate that, thank you. We'll give them just uh, just another couple of seconds or so to see if anybody is frantically trying to dial in. I, it is frustrating. If you put in one, num one number wrong on that meeting ID, you got to start over. And I'll give everybody a, another second to do that. All right. Well, it does not appear that we have anybody, so I will close the second public comments portion of the evening. And we will move into communications. Ms. Mitchell, who is up first? Council Member Gavin. Council Member Gavin, you're up. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, very brief for me tonight, uh, Planning Commission, uh, just some updates on when the next meetings will be. Planning Commission will be uh, April 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, Master Plan Steering Committee uh, will take place May 18th at 7 p.m. And then the Environmental Advisory Committee, um, there was no April meeting. And so the next one will be May 20th at 6.30 p.m. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Hennon. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the ZBA heard two cases for home additions. They approved the first and the second was postponed until their meeting on May 10th. So they could wait for some additional information from the homeowner. And then the tree board will also be meeting on May 10th. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And council members, if, if I'm going out of, uh, out of the actual rotation here, I apologize. It has been a while since I've been in the, the seat. So I'm trying to recall, but if I go out of, out of order, I'm sorry, just be ready. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Dean, let's go to you next. Okay, and this is in order. Um, I don't have much to report um, from Parks and Rec, but I do want to remind everyone that the naming context, contest for Oxford, Oxford Merchants Park closes on April 23rd, and you may find information about this contest on the city's website, as well as the Parks and Recreation Facebook page. I'd also like to remind everyone that outdoor programming is happening. And if you want to register for any of the programs that Parks and Recreation is offering outdoors, you may do that online. And we continue to hope for improved Michigan health so that we may see everyone um, safely outdoors this spring. Thank you. Thank you. The, the names that I submitted for the park were summarily rejected quite quickly. Uh, so we will still be moving on to uh, some other, other potential names. Um, Council Member Baker, still there. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, my, um, likewise, my uh, Parky McPark face uh, didn't uh, didn't seem to make the cut there, so I'm kind of bummed about that. But um, in brighter news, uh, the DDA board um, met last week, Wednesday, April 14th, and they um, continued their portion of the budgetary process and have um, approved the, uh, the the draft budget. Uh, that we will see uh, in the weeks ahead. Uh, and there was unanimous board support about proceeding with uh, the Coolidge crosswalks, um, finding ways to, to open those back up, especially given the fact that we now have several crosswalks on 12 mile, uh, thanks to um, Oakland County. Uh, and there's um, a subcommittee that's underway working on uh, potential investments along the west side of 12 mile in that district over there. Um, to, to add additional um, vitality and energy uh, to that part of our great downtown. A historical committee meets uh, on May 11th, and uh, the committee would certainly like to thank council administration and staff for their support um, for Berkeley History Month uh, coming up uh, uh, next month in May. Uh, and um, uh, they are continuing to, uh, to scan in and archive um, you know, newly found historical photos and slides and things like that, uh, which, are, which are fantastic. Uh, the Technology Committee meets uh, this week, uh, Wednesday, April 21st. Uh, and um, it's a little, I'm a little belated in celebrating uh, World Backup Day. World Backup Day was uh, actually March 31st, so we're not quite a month away from that 
uh, in the history books here. But, um, but in terms of making sure that your data is, is safe and available, consider some kind of an external USB um, drive or device uh, for local backups and, um, and research and investigate um, you know, cloud-based backup systems um, in case something happens to your residents, uh, you know, she sure, sure hope not. But, uh, you know, uh, as we become more and more digital and we have our photographs and our documents and things, uh, that means much to us. Uh, just ensure that, um, uh, that those things are, are protected as well. Uh, I'll gloss over the, uh, the MML Capital Conference. Uh, that was um, a bit over a month ago. So I apologize for missing uh, last meeting to give you guys uh, you know, my perspectives on what the MML had to say, but there were some, some terrific sessions in there as I'm sure many of you experienced as well and enjoyed. Uh, so um, I just like to take a second here, if I may, uh, to first begin with a quote from Leo Christopher, who once said, um, vulnerability is the essence of connection and connection is the essence of existence. Uh, and as, as you know, uh, the last couple of weeks have been pretty tough for me. Uh, it's, been, it's been very scary and very amazing uh, to be so vulnerable and to be so open. Uh, I'd like to thank um, our, our mayor, uh, Mr. Uh, Honorable Turnbrack, uh, on behalf of council uh, for expressing such beautiful and eloquent words uh, at the close of the last council meeting. Uh, my family and I were, were greatly touched um, by, the, by this by your, th um, your thoughtfulness and compassion uh, and the calls and letters and, and messages and outreach uh, from so many here within the city that cares uh, and across our various circles and networks uh, is, is absolutely amazing. Uh, just one example, uh, I'm not trying to single anybody out, but I want a, a special shout out to, uh, to DPW. Uh, they sent me this beautiful card signed by everybody on the team. Uh, it's uh, just one great example of um, just the support that, uh, that I feel, uh, you know, and, and council and, and administration and staff and our volunteers and the residents and neighbors and friends, uh, gosh, you know, sometimes, um, you're just dealt a lousy hand, uh, and it's what you do with that hand that matters most. Um, uh, my wife, um, rocked it, uh, in her battle of this rare, uncurable cancer, um, and, uh, for six and a half years uh, with incredible uh, tenacity and style, those of you that know her. Um, and I was very fortunate uh, to be with her at the very end and to hold her hand as she took her final breaths. And it was incredible experience, probably for both of us, <laughs> you know, I can only tell you my side, uh, but, um, uh, but we're both at peace with this. So my only request uh, for folks uh, with this here is, is please hug somebody you love and, and tell them something that you'd regret not saying if they were no longer here. I had the luxury of doing that uh, with Nicole. Please do that for yourself and for someone else too. Almost made it. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Steve. And, and again, you, you do know, obviously, that, that all of council is certainly in alignment with, with those comments, and we're certainly here for you. And the fact that you made it as far as you did tonight is actually a pretty incredible measure of your strength, because I can tell you that I would probably have given up and left the meeting uh, as soon as I started. Um, so I, I applaud your, your strength um, and, and being able to, to be vulnerable, as, as you mentioned. Councilmember Price. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Our library continues to offer curbside pickup and porch delivery of materials. The library will also host some exciting Zoom events in the next few weeks. I'm especially looking, to, um, looking forward to an evening with Rochelle Riley, which will be tomorrow at 7 p.m and a presentation by Professor Kevin Deegan Krauss on Ranked Choice Voting on April 27th at 7 p.m. You can register for these and other Berkeley Public Library events on their website or by giving them a call. 
I want to give a big thanks to Berkeley Rite Aid and to our staff at Berkeley Parks and Recreation and our city manager's office who organized and executed a very successful vaccine clinic here, right here at the community center last Thursday. Approximately 320 residents received their first shot at that clinic and our whole community is safer as a result. All Michigan residents are at ages 16 and older are now eligible to receive the vaccine. And getting vaccinated is the single most important thing you can do to protect yourself, your loved ones, and our community. So let's get those shots and keep Berkeley strong. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, I also want to thank Teresa and the staff and the city manager for doing a great job at the vaccine clinic last Thursday. We had a great turnout. Uh, nobody passed out. Nobody fainted. Nothing. It was all good, smooth. People you kept moving on through, and we got them through. The actual last count that I got was 307. And if those 307 people are watching tonight, we'll see you on May 6th, and don't be late. Now, last time on Thursday, we had extra shots. So if you have know somebody that is not on the list and may want a shot, May 6th, we'll be doing the second round for them and they may have extra to tell them to stay tuned or come to the community center to find out uh, because we don't want any of this stuff to go to waste. So if they can, we can fit them in, we definitely will. I worked up there for that with the city manager and I'm able to sign off his job book as fully qualified at making copies of driver's licenses and insurance cards. Uh, so he's got that checked off and he's good to go on that for May 6th also. Uh, following on Steve, the, the quotes, I, just, I took that up a little bit, Steve. Uh, the secret of crisis management is not good versus bad, it's preventing the bad from getting worse. That's Andy Gilman. So I'd like to throw a little bit of emergency management stuff in there when I can to let people know we're still working on that. So thank you. I've noticed, Councilmember Blanchard, that all of your quotes seem to be uh, coming from the same book, the, the, the same area. I, Councilmember Baker gives us a little bit more diversity, but that's okay. Still, it, it still works and still very well intended. Thank you. I only got one book. <laughs> <laughs> and the library's closed. <laughs> uh, Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'd like to start kind of on the theme of the last couple of comments by thanking Berkeley Rite Aid. Uh, not, that clinic would not have happened if they had not uh, um, initiated it, brought the uh, brought the vaccines and uh, staffed it. Uh, Berkeley Parks and Rec it also deserves a ton of credit. They opened the doors, uh, something they have not been able to do a whole lot this year, uh, but they did let you know a little over 300 people come through there. Um, and third, Councilmember Blanchard, uh, I think he walked probably 10 miles back and forth along that line, uh, helping people out, getting them photocopies and really whatever they needed. It was, uh, it, to see Jack live is, uh, is a sight to be held because he is everywhere all at once. He's, it's amazing. Um, and then also would like to say, uh, move on and say, um, as we put out recently, uh, it is construction season. Uh, and for a local government, that means investment season. Uh, we'll be funding uh, sewer lining programs. So we'll do another complete mile of uh, new sewer lining this year, which we're excited about. Um, we'll also be doing the uh, second round of our voter uh, funded road improvement program. Uh, that's the second half of the 183 projects that will be funded in the first two years of uh, this program. And then also uh, kicking off our sidewalk program as well. So uh, new infrastructure all the way around. It's um, it's an exciting time to be in local government because these are real physical improvements to the quality of our community. So that's the kind of thing that gets a, a local government nerd like myself very excited. Uh, not only is it us doing it, uh, but Consumers is also uh, launching a very busy summer as well. They have four projects happening in the city of Berkeley as part of a larger push to uh, improve their infrastructure between 12 and 14 mile this year uh, between Greenfield and I believe Woodward. So uh, again, we sometimes construction can be a pain to be in and around, uh, but it's all for the betterment of uh, the quality of life in our community and, and anywhere else as well. So uh, this is good news for us. Uh, that's all I have, sir. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. 
Thank you, Mayor Turbeck. Two quick items. Uh, first, I uh, did send uh, some information to council members earlier today uh, that uh, uh, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services did uh, issue a new health order last Friday, which, ex which essentially extends the previous um, health order to uh, May 24th. And what I'm referring to, it's the order that requires face masks as well as the various limits uh, in social distancing requirements for indoor and outdoor gatherings. So those are still in place. Probably the most significant thing that you, you've, you've, you've likely heard on the news by now uh, is that uh, uh, this order does require face mask wearing by those as young as two years old. Used to be uh, five years old was the minimum, but um, now um, having been there, done that uh, with kids, God bless and good luck to you with, <laughs> with young people at home trying to keep those face masks on the, on the little ones. But uh, that is the requirement, at least through May 24th. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention tonight is um, I get asked uh, from time to time, actually at least the, a couple times a week, and I'm sure council members do as well about the um, marijuana business licensing litigation. And for a number of good reasons, we don't discuss pending litigation publicly. Uh, but what I would like to just mention in the way of a brief update is that as council knows, uh, the city did file and has argued a motion to dismiss that litigation. Um, we did receive word from the court last week that the court does expect to rule on that motion possibly this week. So we're kind of <laughs> anxiously awaiting. I monitor my emails for the latest e-filings that come in from the court, um, but uh, that will that will be coming, and, and if the motion of the, the city's motion to dismiss is granted, uh, that will end uh, the pending litigation, at least this round of it in the circuit court. And if the motion's not granted, well, that means the litigation is going to continue for a while. But uh, but I just wanted to give you that that quick hitter update, and uh, stay tuned for bigger news when we do eventually get the court's ruling. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Starin. Um, I want to highlight a, a proclamation uh, that we passed on, on tonight's consent agenda, proclaiming May 2021 as Mental Health Awareness Month. This is something that we do annually, uh, but given the current circumstances, I, I want to reiterate some of the language. Mental health is important for our individual well being and vitality, as well as that of our families, communities, and businesses. One in five Americans experience a mental health disorder that requires treatment at some point in their lives, and one in 10 children uh, has a serious emotion disturbance that, if left untreated, can lead to failure in school, physical illness, substance abuse, um, entrance into the criminal justice system, and, and possibly even, even suicide. Mental health disorders are biologically based brain disorders that can't be overcome through willpower, and aren't related to, to a defect in somebody's character uh, or intelligence. And when we take those facts and we add in a global pandemic, which has kept many people isolated, uh, we, we can see that the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated uh, rising mental health issues worldwide. Uh, and increasing research has indicated that even folks who, who have had COVID have pot potentially higher rates of developing a mental health disorder. So we have that, we have the impact of, of isolation and, and what that can do to somebody. And you know, part, part of that resolution is to increase awareness and understanding how mental health disorders work and, and expanding access to those in need. And if you watched any of the new shows this weekend, especially on Sunday, you saw that our fair state was the primary topic of conversation and not in a flattering way. Uh, Michigan continues to see a surge in, in COVID rates and hospitalizations as we approach 875,000 cases and over and almost 18,000 deaths. As the attorney just mentioned, the MDHHS has expanded face coverings to now apply to children over the age of two, 
whereas it had previously been five, and extended that order through May 24th, at least for now. As mentioned, we also had an extremely successful vaccination clinic in, in Berkeley that was put on by Rite Aid and staffed by not only our, our staff members, Councilman Blanchard and also Parks and Rec, where we had over 300 people, uh, 320 I believe was the number that I just heard, that, that received the first dose. But the vaccine alone is not going to, to slow down the spread, which was a big topic of conversation on Sunday. In Berkeley, I'm incredibly proud of our residents, our business owners, our entire community in the way that we've handled COVID and the fight against COVID. And I ask that you continue your vigilance, social distancing, and mask wearing. Believe me, we are all frustrated. I'm frustrated. We're all fatigued. But right now, especially in our state, it's not the time to relax. So please safely frequent our businesses, order takeout from our local restaurants. Let's continue to lead and keep each other safe as we move through and, and move into the summer. With that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Support. Motion made by Council Member Price with support from Council Member Blanchard. Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Hennon? Yes. Price? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Chirpak. Yes. The April 19th, 2021 meeting of the 38th Council of the City of Berkeley is adjourned. Hey, everybody. Bye. Stay safe.